Okay, so to pick up from where we left off last, <clears throat> we're going to continue on making our way towards creating our uh, Spotify playlist page. And this is a bit of a schematic of what we're trying to make. So I thought we'd work our way backwards and try to figure out exactly what this is made of. Um, I just want to take a second, you know, to take a step back, look at, look at this final product and realize that it's actually made from a set of four layers. So these four layers are stacked on top of each other in what we call the Z dimension. So this is the vertical dimension and this is the horizontal dimension. This layering is called the Z dimension. So these are the four layers that we're stacking on top. We have this background image in the title and the subtitle and on top of that we have this scrollable content. Notice that it's essentially it's, this is clear on top of this area so that way it's visible when the page loads, but I can scroll up and through it. And the content underneath in the scroll view just follows right on top. This right here is the play button that'll sit right here, as you can see right there. These uh, other play buttons essentially represent an animation that we'll be going through later. But in its most basic form, it's just a play button. And the last piece are these stationary buttons. So they're right here and right here, the more button, the back button, or the left chevron. Took me a long time to learn what that was called. So that's called the left chevron. Okay. So what we're going to work on now is we already built this one up, maybe not in this much detail, but we built something with an image, a title, and a subtitle. Now we're working on building this, and then we'll get to this and this. So let's continue moving forward. So here's what we're looking at right now. So we have a spacer up top that's going to cover up our background. So that's representative of this area right here, that's how this blue section represents this area underneath. This is just a gradient that lies on top for a nice smooth transition. So to make everything a little easier, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this set of clear, I'm going to make it red, and I'm going to give it an opacity. Opacity is on a scale of 0 to 1, so if I give it an opacity of 0, it's clear. If I give it a 1, it's red in its entirety, but if I make it like 0.3 or something of that nature, it's translucent, so I can take a peek inside. Now. If I put a spacer in a V stack, the spacer inherently wants to occupy as much vertical space as possible. But if I put a spacer in an H stack, it wants to occupy as much horizontal space as possible. So in order for me to put a gradient inside of here, I'm going to have to put an H stack so that way it'll expand outwards to the right and to the left. So I'm going to embed the spacer within an H stack. So I'll grab here, embed in an H stack. And if I get rid of this width constraint, it will update and now we have a spacer that expanded all the way out horizontally and I set a height of 200 so now that's this area right here it'll eventually be clear and the next thing what we'll do is we need this to expand outwards now the biggest thing is that this is scrollable content so we don't just need a spacer we need something where we can kind of scroll through it so what we're going to do instead is we're going to take this spacer and we're going to turn this, we're going to embed it in a scroll view for starters. So what we'll do is we'll just grab the whole thing, or a scroll view. And you don't worry about this uh, shift in how things are looking. So if you remember, we said a spacer, if it's in a V stack, tries to occupy as much vertical space as possible. But the problem now is that when we're in a scroll view in a V stack, it doesn't really have a finite uh, height. You know, if we're just in a V stack, you know, the biggest it can be is from here to here. But technically, the scrollable content in the scroll view is infinite. It keeps going and going and going. So the spacer itself has a default height value or a default value uh, in dimension, um, depending on the scroll view now. So let's go ahead and just forget about the spacer for a second, okay? So just to make things easier to look for easier for us to look at, let's say the background of the scroll view, it's going to be the color yellow. Just for us to look at. Let's try that again. It's not happy because we didn't give it any content inside the scroll view. So let's just give it a sample text right there. So you'll see that the scroll view now, the scroll view has uh, one text inside of it that says A. Its width is simply just going to be the uh, the width of the biggest thing inside of it from from uh, you know from width aspect and its height it's taking up as much space from top to bottom as possible 
So we started setting up the scroll view. That'll be this area, uh, this area down here. Okay. Now let's go ahead and try something here. Let's do. Let's create some repeatable content. So this right here is repeatable content. So this is a bunch of views that are all identical, and you know, in real life, they'll all have a different name. You know, might say uh, this one might say Drake, and the next one might say you know some other famous artist or, or the song that they uh, created. But for all intents and purposes, the components are the same. This button's the same. It's just a text field and a button. So what we're going to do is we're going to introduce something called for each. Okay. And for each, the way it works is I say, I'm essentially running through a loop. I'm running through a list. So I, I can say, do something X number of times. So I can say for each, and if I write, I'm going to, I'm going to write it and then we'll discuss it. So if I say for each, from zero to up to less than 10, so up to 10, not up through 10, spit out a text. So what that's going to do, if it runs properly here, well, We'll have to add this. I'll, I'll discuss what each of these is in a moment. What each area of this is. So what I just did is I created one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I created ten of these texts that say A. I can have it say ABC. And you'll see it'll update. So the reason it did ten is because it looped through this idea of creating a text, and it looped through a total of zero through nine times. So it, first thing it did is it said I'm gonna create an indicator value of zero. I'm gonna I'm gonna create a random variable named indicator. And it's gonna have a value of zero. And I'm gonna go through this and create a text that says ABC and I'll display it. And then when I go back to this loop, I'm gonna instead of being zero next time, I'm gonna be one. And then it goes through the loop all the way and it creates ABC again. Then it goes and does the same thing with the indicator set as 2. So why do we particularly care if the indicator is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9? It doesn't, it doesn't really matter if we're going to continue spitting out text ABC. But if we choose instead to create a text value, a text field with the value of indicator, you'll notice that we actually loop through and we create a text field, and the text inside is indicator. So it, it's 0, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, all the way up to 10, but not through 10. So another way you can see it is I can say start the loop at 3 and end it at 10. So now I cut out the first 3. It didn't start at 0, 1, and 2. We didn't do those because it started at 3 and progressively added 1 until it got up to 10. So I can write any numbers here. I can say from 4 to 15. And so we'll get from 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, not inclusive of 15. Because this is just a simple, it's simply just a less than sign. It's not a less than or equal to sign. Okay? So what I did there is I created some repeatable content. Okay? And it's repeatable because the entire thing is just a series of texts, but it does have some unique information there, which is the actual text that's being displayed. So we'll change this back to zero and 10. So we can actually put some pretty complex stuff in this repeatable area. So what we'll do actually is we'll put an H stack instead. So every time it runs through this loop, we'll create an H stack, and the H stack itself will have text, a text field that says indicator, and we'll put a spacer in it. And if you remember, the spacer will actually push the text all the way to the left. Now we're starting to get something that looks a little more scrollable. So if you can tell, we have this ability to scroll through everything now. Now, what we need to actually do is technically that scroll view needs to encompass this upper clear area. So we actually need to take this scroll view and bring it out one level. I need it to be inclusive of this red area. So I'm going to take that and I'm going to bring it up outside. Now, if I hit resume, we have something that's a little different. And what's confusing here, don't, don't be confused because this yellow coloring here is actually just because the entire scroll view has a background of yellow. And don't forget that the scroll view is sitting on top of this. So what I did is I gave this an opaque yellow color, but it's just sitting on top of this. So what I can do instead is I can just so help us so we can help see through it. 
I'll give it an opacity of 0 0.1. When it resumes, you'll, you can see, we can see through it. Okay? So, what we'll do from here is we won't do from 0 to 10. We'll do from 0 to 20. Let's see if it gets through the whole screen. No, I'm not there. 25. Almost there. Let's do 30. So as you can see, we're starting to create some scrollable content. And if you look here, we want something where this is opaque, but this is clear. And that's what gives us this ability to scroll over. So what I'll actually do is I'll embed everything in the bottom portion here. I'll actually embed that into a VStack. And the reason I'm embedding them into a VStack is because I can just give those specific items, I can give them a background that is black. Like so. And now suddenly we have something that's transparent, or at least translucent up top, with a black item, with a, with a black background for the rest of the scroll view. To make things a little better for us, what we'll do, we can't see the text because the text is also black. So if background is changes the background color, we can actually change the color of the text by foreground. Foreground color, and we'll make it top black, or dot white actually. When it runs, sure enough, you'll see exactly what we're hoping for. And so the last thing we're going to do in this video is we just want to go ahead and try to get rid of, if we resume here, what we want to do is we want to get rid of this area, this, this little yellow line, you know, if you look at, we're being really picky here, but if we look at this, there's no little gap here. It goes straight from the black to the gradient to the, to the transparent. So to get rid of that, what we're actually going to do is we need to, so that's actually what we call spacing. That's spacing between two items within a vertical stack. So what we need to do is we actually need to bring this vertical stack, rather than having the scroll view inside the vertical stack, we need the vertical stack inside of the scroll view. It's a little bit of a nuance, but after I do that, you know, the indentation of everything might be a little bit off. So I can select everything, Command A, and I can re-indent everything so it looks, and you know, everything's in the right hierarchy. So Control, which looks like the little upward chevron or carrot, Control I. Now everything is back in its proper order. So now that I've done that, what I can do is for the vertical stack in here, I can select it all, or I can, sorry, I can initialize it, and I can say spacing is equal to zero. And just like that, we hit resume, it's gone. And that's exactly what we were hoping for. All right, and so that wraps up this video, and you know, in the next video, we'll continue on making something um, that gets closer and closer to our end goal of creating this right here. All right, we're getting there. So thanks for being with us, and we'll see you in the next video. All right, have a good one.